Today, I'm going to become a thorn in the side of Tottenham Hotspur by becoming the manager of every team they play against this season. Between every Premier League game, I'll use the in-game editor to move myself to their next opponent, meaning they'll never be able to escape me. But Tom, why are you subjecting Spurs to this misery? Well, the comment that gave me the idea for this video used Spurs as the example, so I'm just running with it. Tottenham's first game of the season is against Leeds United, so we have our first team. This video is going to take forever to film, so rather than create a bespoke tactic for each team, I'm going to follow the assistant manager's recommendations. And so we're not sat here for 12 days watching me play every single game, I'm going to use this instant result button on my skin to simulate the matches. And we start off with a huge win against Spurs away from home, fantastic! I'm kind of hoping that if we can beat Tottenham loads in the early stages of the season, then the morale is going to get lowered quickly, and then they'll become easier to beat further down the season. So Tottenham's next game is against Liverpool, and that's our next team. Can we inflict Tottenham's second defeat on them in the season? We can! It's a 3-1 win for Liverpool at home, and Tottenham are bottom of the table. But the next game is against 19th place Southampton, and I'm not really confident here. So far, they've lost 4-1 to Newcastle, and 3-0 to Man City. I've used the 4-2-3-1 Gigan press so far, so I'm going to try it again. I don't think we're going to do it, if I'm honest with you. I, I really don't think we're going to have a, a hope in hell at beating them, as you can see. We've lost it 3-0. I guess now we've lost with Southampton. The aim changes from beating Tottenham in every single game to just trying to minimise their total points for the season. You know what? I, I reckon we can get them relegated. But it moves Tottenham up to 15th place in the table, but luckily for us, our next fixture is the North London derby. I mean, London is red, right? And football Football manager agrees. 4-1. What a fantastic result, which puts Arsenal on top of the table and Tottenham on the edge of the relegation zone. And next up for Spurs is another London rival in West Ham. Bowen, Skamaka and Paqueta have all got to get on the score sheet here, surely. Well, I tell you what, Bowen and Paqueta are absolute frauds. At least Tottenham didn't win and we kept them down in 17th place. But our next two games are tough, 19th place Everton and 16th place Nottingham Forest. We've got Calvert-Lewin, Townsend, Ben Godfrey and Yerry Mina all injured here. Uh, and I might try a fire that formation here because Everton aren't very good. You know what? We may have drawn the game, but that actually works. 13 shots to five, a much higher XG as well, loads more possession. Another day, we'd have won that. So we tried the same thing at Nottingham Forest. And I only went and won the game 1-0 with Jesse Lingard getting the goal, pushing Forrest up to ninth place in the table. Our next three games were against high-flying Man United, Brighton and Villa. No. We've just won with Forrest and now we've just lost to Man United with two own goals. If Spurs had lost that game, they would have gone bottom of the table. Luckily, we got back to winning ways with Brighton, even with Pascal Gross and Matoma missing the game through injury. But our next game was with Aston Villa, who had just fallen down the table after losing their last five games in a row. I tell you what, counter-attacking football is what's going to be needed here. And we've just drawn which I, I, it's better than losing, I suppose. But the next four games are against Wolverhampton Wanderers who somehow sit fourth, Chelsea, Man City and Newcastle. This has to be a clean sweep of wins against Tottenham. I don't know how Wolves are doing so well this season. I just hope it continues for this next match, which it has done. Raul Jimenez with a brace and a 4-1 win over Spurs, which puts them firmly in the relegation zone. Oh, they've already sat Conte. He's gone. After that game, he was gone. They've now got this guy called uh, Dean Rastrick in charge uh, as the caretaker manager. I'm just imagining myself shaking Conte's hand 11 times so far this season before every single match. He must hate me. But of course, me moving to every single Premier League club means the old manager gets sacked. So this season, there is going to be absolute upheaval in Premier League managers. Anyway, it's Chelsea next and we're playing a diamond, which just gets us a 2-1 win. It was quite a close game actually and Tottenham had the better XG. I think we got pretty lucky there. And that does put Tottenham down into 20th place in the table. The player morale at this point must be on the absolute floor and this must be why we're able to get some decent results against Tottenham even when they have been on paper the better team in the match stats. Morale manager 2023, that's what this game should be called. If Haaland doesn't score a hat-trick in this next game, I'm going to be fuming. <laughs> he only got one but there was only one goal needed in the game as Man City actually 
dominated that one. Maybe Alexander Isaac is the better striker. Or not. It's Almiron who gets the goal, but it's a 1-1 draw with Spurs. Their first point for a while, actually. Luckily, they stay bottom of the table. Spurs only have two more league games until we break for the 2022 World Cup against Fulham and Leicester. If Spurs are going to win some games, it's probably going to be these two. And they don't beat Fulham. It's a 4-1 win. Mitrovic. I love you. And now we just need Leicester to pull off the same miracle by beating Tottenham, which <laughs> they do 4-2 away from home. Leicester are winning Tottenham in the mud. And so heading into the World Cup break, Tottenham sit bottom of the table with just two wins to their name and 10 losses. Ah, they've just appointed Eric Ten Hag. He literally joined today, so I don't think he was in charge for that game, but he's got the entire World Cup period now to try and get this team back together. Speaking of managers, I've caused some massive issues by moving myself to all of these different Premier League clubs. So you can see here on the incoming manager side, I'm the incoming manager for a lot of teams, but you can see that people like Patrick Vieira are now managers of Arsenal. And Ruud van Nistelrooy has gone to Man United, so there are some returning legends here. I cannot wait to get rid of them in the second half of the season when I take over the team for a second time. Anyway, now it's time for the World Cup. Many months later. Oh, I've made it back from the World Cup where I've just seen a cracking final where Morocco bottle it in the 120th minute as Mbappe wins it for France. The best thing about the World Cup break was the fact that Tottenham couldn't win a single friendly, which is beautiful. So let's take over Crystal Palace and carry on this streak. It's 19th versus 20th, and if Tottenham lose, they will be five points away from their nearest rival. But they won. <sighs> That's so frustrating. Up next, we've got Brentford and Bournemouth either side of New Year. Also, if Brentford win the next game, you've got to subscribe to the channel. And we do get the win with Brentford, but Bournemouth couldn't get the win, even with 16 shots and nine on target. Hugo Lloris pulling out a 7.8 man of the match performance. Oh, also Brentford won, so don't forget to subscribe. But that puts us on the halfway stage of the season, with Tottenham in 19th place with 16 points. This has actually gone way better than I was expecting. I thought Tottenham would probably just end up mid-table, but we've got a really good chance here of actually seeing them get relegated. But now it's time for my second spell in charge of Manchester United. I just hope we don't score two own goals this time. Interestingly, the assistant manager thinks we've got to go for a different tactical style this time around. Last time it was 4-2-3-1 Gigan press, and that's now not thumbs up. We'll go for vertical Tiki Taka, and we'll go for a 4-3-3. Uh, a oh, but we still can't win! Tottenham have done the double over Man United this season. That's their third win since the World Cup break and one more point could take them out of the relegation zone. Hopefully Nottingham Forest can pull off another miracle. Never in doubt, Jesse Lingard. He's got four goals against Spurs this season now. Next up, we're managing Aston Villa. And last time we saw them, they were 20th in the table. They're now somehow in the European places. I like to think I turned that around for them when I was their manager last time. And now they're moving closer to the Champions League places following a big 2-1 win. Next up, we're back to back with the Bees, Brighton and Bournemouth. We won the game earlier this season with Brighton and now we've done the double against Spurs. Fantastic work. But we lost the game earlier with Bournemouth this season and now Tottenham have done the double. It would have been a really close game had Bournemouth been able to get some shots on target. The good news is though, Spurs are still in the relegation zone. With Leeds up next, who gave us that big 4-1 win on the opening day of the season, I'm feeling pretty confident. Oh, but they can't repeat it this time around. Actually a really good game from Tottenham. They dominated Leeds. Luckily, teams around Tottenham also picked up points. So they're still in the relegation zone. And with Brentford up next, who are in poor form, and Crystal Palace afterwards, who sit bottom of the table, this could be the chance that Tottenham need to get a good run of form going and actually start to play well. If we don't win either of these games, I'm going to get worried. But I heard that Ivan Tony's put a massive bet on this game for Brentford to win. Uh, oh, I guess he bet on Brentford to lose. And now we've got to rely on Palace to win something they've only done three times since October. How did they win 7-1 against Everton? Control possession, five at the back. This might be the best chance we've got. Eric Ten Hag is taunting me. He thinks I'm a fantastic choice to become the Crystal Palace manager. Little does he know I'm about to batter him. Well, I think a draw counts as a battering, perhaps. At least we've stopped the winning run of Tottenham. But frustratingly, that point moves Tottenham out of the relegation zone. But April looks to be a busy and tough month for Spurs, starting off with Leicester. If Tottenham win, they will leapfrog Leicester and probably quite a few other teams in the Premier League. 
and they do go on to win. Why are they suddenly good? Yeah, that puts Tottenham in 15th place on 32 points. They've had a great run since the World Cup. They're on a five game unbeaten run, so hopefully second place Liverpool can put a stop to it. Finally, it feels like so long since we've beaten Tottenham, but it's another relegation battle with Fulham up next. Oh, Fulham, please do not let us down. Oh, you've let us down. No, 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 no. I move Spurs up to 14th place in the table on 35 points. I think at this stage, 35 points might just be enough to not get relegated, but it is a pretty high points total in the Premier League this season. So if we just beat them, then there's a chance still. But with the next three games being Man City, Wolves and Chelsea, all of whom are in the top six, anything is possible. So Haaland didn't score a hat-trick earlier on this season. He better score one now or nothing at all. Look at the match stats. I'm sorry, but how? That's just, I can't believe that. Perhaps the game's getting its own back on us just a little bit. We may have FM Spurs quite a lot at the start of the season, hence why they were in the relegation zone at the World Cup, but they're getting their own back and FMing us. Oh, I've, I've just accidentally continued past the Wolves game. Um, I, oh, no. I'll be honest, I'm surprised I've not done it before this. Oh, but you can see down here, look. Spurs won 3-1 anyway. I mean, there's still a small chance we can get them relegated. We'll just have to win every single game for the rest of the season against them. Chelsea, Newcastle and Arsenal are the next three, and they've got to be wins. Although Tottenham's form has been so good, it wouldn't surprise me for them to win every single game for the rest of the season now. But I think this shows how important morale is, because as soon as Tottenham picked up some wins and boosted their morale, they've just looked unstoppable but not unstoppable for Chelsea. They get the 3-1 win and finally Tottenham lose. It's Newcastle next. I am manifesting a win to the football manager gods. And we get it, Isaac with a brace. But frustratingly, the teams below Tottenham aren't doing anything and it's looking more unlikely that they're gonna finish in the relegation zone. But it's the North London derby next and Arsenal are top of the league. We proved earlier that North London is red. And it's still red as Arsenal win 1-0 in a dominant performance on the stats, but the match scoreline was pretty tight. And so with three games remaining against Southampton, Everton and West Ham, there really is a chance that Tottenham could go down if they lose every game and the teams below them finally pull their act together. I'm putting everything into the Southampton Gigan press right now. Come on, that's what I'm talking about. We get the win. But other results haven't really helped us out with Tottenham getting relegated, so we are gonna need a miracle if it's gonna happen. This time we do have Calvert-Lewin available to us. He's so good in Football Manager. I need him to score a hat-trick right now. <sighs> It's not what we needed. And it means that Tottenham will finish at the very lowest 14th this season. At the highest, it could be 12th. We need West Ham to perform. So for one final time this season, let's press that simulate match button and see what we get. We finish with a West Ham win. Skamaka gets the goal and that confirms it. Tottenham finished 14th in the Premier League, only four points safe of the relegation zone. A lot of fine margins this season. If Man United didn't score two own goals and Man City didn't get FM'd by Spurs, they would have been relegated. I actually think we've done a pretty good job. Spurs finishing 14th is way lower than they should do, so I think mission accomplished. But how well would Spurs do and the rest of the Premier League if we move them to some of Europe's lowest ranked leagues in the world? Well, that video is on screen for you right now to watch and it was a banger.